Okay, we're here with Akara Asatola. Is that correct? That'll work. That'll work. <laughs> Little Sage's Books. Mm -hmm. And it's November 15th, 2014, mm -hmm. at the Boston International Antiquarian Book Fair. And I'll start off, Akara, by asking you what I ask everybody else. Tell us about your family, your background, where you came from, schools, etc. siblings, married, single, what? Okay, well, um, I've, uh, I'm a Fort Lauderdale native, even though it might be surprising because I don't have the tan to show for it. Yeah. Um, I was raised, I'm the only child of a single mom um, who um, always kind of put a classical education uh, first as much as she could. So I had a good cultural upbringing with a, even if it was a used book, I had a book in my hand at all times. Um, and uh, I went to school for music at Florida State, um, got in, you know, audition-based kind of conservatory, and uh, I'm a flute player and a piano player, and, uh, and, um, and then I got married young and had uh, two beautiful girls, and um, I think about the time my youngest was one, I started to play around with the idea of books as collectibles, books as objects. Don't even really remember exactly how. But I always had a little bit of a drive to be an entrepreneur and actually really just to do something relevant. Um, I always say I used to watch my first husband come and go with rolling briefcases off to kind of important things. And I just remember thinking, I want to make an impact on the world. So when I'm 90 and I look back, yeah. I have some kind of a body of work mm. that's meaningful. Um, and then I, had, uh, I kept the business going even after and through divorce. Um, right around that time, I went to cabs. And, um, what was that year? Do you that would have been three years ago. So okay. I'm pretty sure I'm 12 or maybe 11. Yeah. I wish I had that exact date. And enough people started to tell me that that was important, that I went. I got the ABA scholarship. Oh, that. great. Yeah. And uh, I knew that I was on a trail that was starting to be kind of special. Um, as soon as I left cabs, I you know, put the last $200 on my Discover card to come to Boston. <laughs> so, because I knew that I needed to connect and observe more. The first fair I ever went to, I'll backtrack, was New York. The, the, the big, big one. The that, big and I'd show. never been to an antiquarian fair at all, not even a little colloquial one. And uh, so I, E. Wharton gave me a comp pass. Oh. And I, we were in some communication because of some, you know, chat lines. And uh, she came to see me and said, that would be Sarah Baldwin, right? Yeah. How are you enjoying the show, my dear? And I said, I'm really, I'm kind of overwhelmed, and I'm actually kind of sad because I thought that I wanted to do this, and now, I mean, the horizon seemed so, so distant, right? Yeah. Um, so she said, sweetheart, I feel like that every time I set up, I mean, look around, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that made me feel really great. And I still had a long way to go because this was not my training. It's not my, you know, second generation in the trade. Um, I wasn't even an English literature or history major to where I already have all this body of knowledge. Um, but I liked the learning curve about it. It was challenging and it was exciting and, and it's real, real work, it's relevant. It's opening up treasure boxes and, and helping to kind of write in the large chapter of our humanity. Um, and so, um, let's see, I kind of had my eye on ABA membership from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know exactly why. It's not, uh, it's not the status, it wasn't the I want to get here, I'm not a climber in that way. I, it just felt like some kind of stamp that I wanted. Yeah. So that uh, once I was officiated, you know, that way, that, that I could then really kind of feel comfortable to look at decades and decades of work and know that that's where I sat and where I belonged. So um, I just got in in February, and uh, that was an extremely meaningful time for me. Um, and I felt it was really perfect to do this fair as my first fair. And I'll tell you why. I already told them I would be doing a little kind of a shout out because what the ABA was about to me was this extended family, this kind of family tree of, of non-relations that were all part of this, you know, this amazing process. And the very first video of yours that I watched, and I watched many of them, just little at a time. Mm. I would forget about it, then I would go back to it because I realized it was like having this like hall of elders that we could access. Right. We could open up their books and see and hear all of these nuances. When do you even get 30 minutes with your best friend on the floor no, of a you fair? Don't. You, you, don't. It's, you don't, it's interrupted. So here we got these 30 minutes and I just listened and watched and sat there like I was with, you know, with my teachers. And, uh, but the very first one I watched was R. Dalton Smith and Diane Dubois. Oh yeah. You know, and they, 
blew my mind. Yeah. They blew my mind. And um, so when I went to Boston that time after cabs, I, um, I made a little note that I wanted to go visit them, not, them not knowing who I was. And I told them that I was a young dealer with my eye on ephemera, and I just was so inspired by their personal story and their work story. And, you know, her. And yeah, she immediately mm -hmm. embraced me yeah. and then sat me down with Robin, and he talked to me for about an hour or two. And then they did something really unique, and it speaks to kind of who we all are or aspire to be. They said, you need some good things to play with. So we're going to send you a little box of some things that oh, have oh nice. kind of been kicking around for a while. And, um, you know, explore real material, sweetie. You need, you need that. And that began, you know, kind of having, seeing what things could do and bringing, bringing things forward that were, that were important. And um, I was really happy to go give her a squeeze because I'm her aisle mate <laughs> now. This is no. my first fair. Just have, we haven't mentioned that this is my first ABA fair. And not only that, but we squeezed each other's hands because she heard the news that I had heard just last week, which was that we're sharing a booth in Oakland for the California Fair oh, in isn't February. That great? So is that a circle? Yeah. It's like <laughs> destiny. It's like, a circle. Yeah. It's really and you know, when you asked me to do this today, I said, I don't have this legacy story that I can bring forward. But I thought, you know, I'll take one for the team and be kind of the new girl and show mm. all of my naivete. I'll just, you know, be humble because I might inspire someone else when they see at least this starter story, yeah. and they can see that you know that that it's you, here's some steps, and you can you can jump in relatively quickly, put a little time in, put intense passion and love and research in, and you know you're there. When you were at Cabs, do you remember who um, who the uh, featured dealer was? Hmm. Or who the it was Catherine Loeb doing the guest speaker, and the feature was. It was Steve Smith and Rob and Kevin and Lorne, Dan. I think it was Nina. Nina. Yeah, I think it was Nina. Nina. Yeah, she wasn't on on yet. She was. She definitely gave the special talk. Were you and Jonathan Smalters? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This is his first fair too. It is. Yeah. It is. So that's yeah. it's kind of nice to to um, in ten years from now to reflect back on your beginnings and and where you are. Yeah, incredible. It is incredible. And I, a woman came to, up to me that I was put in touch with, uh, and she came up to my booth and said I wanted to meet you, and she asked me if I would, you know, lightly and gently mentor her from afar. So, you know, circling and, and helping out, you know, even even with little knowledge that I have is, is really important. Yeah. And here we are. Um, did you, do you ever do the Florida Book Fair? I do it every year. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you like that? I love it. It's, it's a, not that far from you. It's my only drivable fare since I'm yeah. in the southern tip of Florida. You know, I drive for two days and I'm still in Georgia. Right. Um, so people ask me, um, also looking at fares, I knew I wanted to be fare centric. I knew I wanted to be in front of my material. And I believe in putting your energy and your time and your money where the collectors are and where the, you know, where all the energy is. Because you see immediately that the people were talking about the shift and the change and that things were dying and I was, I, I just got here. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get aboard a, a ship that's going down. No, 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 no. So I have, to, I have to do my part. So I remember shipping my stuff and going to my first long distance fair after doing Florida for a year or two or three. And uh, I thought, oh, it'll be years before I'm one of those people with the giant cases and the thing and what kind yeah. of like fancy stuff do you have to have to be able to travel on suite with your books, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I FedExed a couple of little thin boxes out there and and I thought that was really important too to, to express that you just you can do it. Just get on a darn plane right. and go. Do it. You know? Look at these guys driving from East Coast, West Coast. Yeah. You know, turning around and, and doing that again. I think that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it is kinda crazy. I mean, but it's like, you know, Passion and following following the circuit is is important. Some of them are afraid to fly. Yeah. Oh, that could be also. <laughs> no, no I, I know. Okay. I know it's a reason. Yeah. And uh, some of them have been doing it for years because they made all these stops along the way out and the stops along the way back, but those stops don't exist anymore. It's true. It's true. So Doug Harding is going out there. He's just going to drive right and then come back. Yeah. He's going to be out there for two months. Yeah. I wish I could be someplace in two months. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, you, you said that you have two daughters I do. and that you are divorced. I, yes, but okay. in the last uh, two years, I remarried. You remarried. I remarried. And 
Mr. McLaughlin? Uh, I was a McLaughlin, and now I'm an Isatola. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what was your maiden name? McLaughlin. Okay. <laughs> and did your first marriage? Oh, Mestre. Well, and it's done. Yeah, but yeah, that's, that's over with. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's done. Yeah. Okay, so you have two children. I have two children of my own and two stepchildren. So we are a body of four kids and a dog and a cat and. Uh, it's pretty nice to be able to do fairs with somebody keeping the home fires lit yeah, yeah. and someone who's supportive and wants me to really excel and, and do my life's work. So It's very important. It's really important because I did it when I had to like have a neighbor watch the dog and have a neighbor or my mom watch the kids and you know that was tough but it did it. How old are these kids? 9, 9, 12 and 18. 18. Mm -hmm. the, the 12 and 18 have to be from your The 9 life. and the 18 are the first and that but yeah. You have an 18-year-old? I do. No way. Yeah, I do. Way? That's what happens when you're in your 40s. You have children that oh are almost God, that are, you don't you know. look that old. <laughs> Not in the least. So, outside well, of kids and marriages, um, this is my fashion. Okay, tell me the origin of the, the name Little Sages. Hmm. Well, if I had to do it over again, I might just decide to do, I love the gravitas of Isatola rare yeah, books. Sure. I love named firms. Yeah. But at the time, um, it was a little bit of a play on uh, um, kind of being a sage out in the world is a little bit, that's a little bit much to make a claim for. So maybe we're all little sages in our own little circles of, of learning from one another. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was a little bit botanical play on salvia the uh, the plant the plant that I love to grow it's salvation redemption through the written word knowledge uh, opening doors that's cool do you have an open shop I don't have an open shop so you do you, do you work out of your house I work out of my house Good. I'm by appointment I am in, in an antique shop with a book only space that uh -huh. uh, that's kind of cool and, um, and in Fort Lauderdale in Fort Lauderdale yeah and um, uh, I don't like when people ask, do you have an open shop? Oh, so you're online. No, those aren't the only pl two places yeah, to exist. That's right. <laughs> I really believe in the material characteristics and quality of the book, the presence, the visual, and the interaction, you know, and teaching opportunities. That doesn't happen online. There's a bookseller I used to go to in Fort Lauderdale, Robert Hiddle. Hiddle. Yeah. What happened to him? He's around. He does the Florida Fair. He's mostly, I think, appraising now. Yeah. Yeah, and the shop is not not there. Yeah. I thought the shop was there, but he sold it to the kind two of. But now lately, it's like no. I've been through the storefront. There's there's not too much happening there. But if I'm misstating that, then I apologize. No, Robert, no, sorry. it's just it was fun. It was fun when I used to go to his place because I used to go upstairs yeah. and he'd have all these lo wonderful things oh. up there, and now they're. Phew, not, right. not there anymore. I guess she just saves for the fair. We're three in the state of Florida. We are um, A. Parker's in Sarasota yeah. and Mike Slicker, Lighthouse yeah, Books, yeah. and St. Pete. And myself became number three. So there we were sitting the trifecta, right? Yeah. And now recently we have um, Book Block came down and he moved down from Michigan and uh, he's down there. So we now so are you have four. Four mm -hmm. ABA members. Yeah. But you have a lot of other Florida booksellers. Tons. It? Amazing. Florida yeah. Antiquarian Booksellers Association is strong. Yeah, I'm a member of that as well. Yeah. I, uh, I when we go down, we stay in Delray. Yeah. So I want to. I always go over to the the book something book bazaar, whatever it is in Boca. Okay. He's a strange guy. Bookwise, here. David. Yeah, he yeah. has a, a rare book room. Yeah, that he I've never. In. I've never been allowed in it either. No. no Can we, we get us in? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I always call I always call ahead or write ahead for an appointment, yeah. and I never get an answer. Okay, so it's not just uh, us down there. Who no, are, no, okay. it's, it's everybody. He's <laughs> just scared to death of making a mistake. Uh -huh. Rather than trying to make friends, he's making yeah. a lot of people not like mm -hmm. him. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and friends. I mean, that's that's it. Yeah, uh, it's all a connection. It's a network, mm -hmm. etc. Um, you know, I, I often wondered about him, but hey. That's, yeah, we're that's not. I don't. Story. We're not supporting each other in. in it, it's a business. We're supporting each other in an in an industry to to provide for our families and ourselves and support our, our lifestyle, but but it we're 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 in it to to provide each other with a different kind of support of scholarship and of you know adding to this record. I really am so, you know, kind of intent on that, and so this this helpful kind of ocean of minds is what I, that's what I see the ABA being. Yep. I really do. And that may smack of idealism, but I, that's what I, that's what I look for. 
Well, we need idealism. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us something about your inventory. What do you mm. specialize in? What do you like to deal with? Well, I just got finished shopping the Shadow Fair, so it's fresh in my mind what I like to deal with, right? Because <laughs> I rapid fire went through about 10 boots and got bags of goodies. Um, I have recently started stating that I specialize in women, in culture, uh, social history, um, kind of the folk experience, humanity, you know, all the aspects of humanity, and uh, marginalized communities, whether it's minorities or, you know, sexuality and gender, you know, non-normative things, quote unquote, you know, things like that. Um, because I guess I, I just believe in everyone's, you know, um, highest good. Yeah. So, so all of those aspects of, of, of humanity's highest good. Um, but I really love things that have color, and so decorative arts and fashion and things that are just like beautiful and pretty, because yeah. uh, that's like also the, the high points of a civilization. Um, so made by hand, things that we would have given to one another, things that show relationships. Hmm. Yeah. So um, actually, I was in a booth, and a quick woman quickly asked me what I what I wanted. And uh, I said, women, maybe children's art, duck a duck a duck. Someone came along who's a buddy and said, oh, an erotica box. And I said, oh, and what do you have in there for duck a duck a duck? And she goes, I thought you said you did kids and family. And now you wanted the erotica box. I said, sweetie, they go hand in hand. Yeah. You know, you know let's call it um, human arts, shall we? Yeah. These are really, you know, kind of what makes us who we are. So. Well, that's cool. Did you go see the uh, uh, Brian Cassidy has a box full of. 1940s and 50s so-called porno. No, you know, I'm kind of like over that. Um, as a female dealer and exploring what I wanted to as far as like marginalized communities rights and the struggle, I kind of made a very conscious decision that I wasn't going to actually do nudie photos, whether it's empowering for someone's nude yeah. body or this or that or that. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm just not going to go there because I, I realize that it gets, you know, elevated to an artistic level and, and different aspects, but I just, I just don't. I want something a little bit outside of that, contextualized somehow differently. Yeah. All right. So you do, this is your first book fair. It is my yeah, first, first ABA. First ABA book fair. Yeah. Um, what kind of a presence do you have on the internet? I have, um, well, I'm on ABE books, and I'm on Biblio and Antique Book. Um, and I am thrilled to be with all of my inventory on the ABA website. Yeah. And with everyone's amazing work to elevate that site to such a level. Yeah. It now I, it's incredible. I just asked Luke the other day if I, I said, hey, can I redirect my domains that I had for years, Little Sages and Little Sages Books? Uh, can I redirect them to my landing page for now until I jump on the Bibliopolis train? Because uh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. I, I'm converting a longtime colleague who's been a dealer for 35 years. I'm finally bringing him over to the ABA side uh -huh. uh, he, because of the website. He was like, you know what? The website. That's it, Kara. Very important. It's gorgeous. It's just amazing. It's very important that website. Yeah. And uh, I think that most people who are members of the association don't even know, don't even look at it. Mm. But hey, it's that's beautiful. the way it goes. And I see catalogs in my future. My goal was at least a short list for this. Something physical. I like promotional material that can be innovative and and have something to have. How can we be book and paper dealers and not give someone something in their hand? Right. You know. I agree. And Greg had that timely uh, had a timely article on the site about about not not just e lists, but let's bring back. You know, do them inexpensively, do them somehow, yeah. but get a physical catalog. And how can we not look at a physical archive when that's what we're all about? I you agree. know, we're we just not doing as many catalogs as we used to do. Yeah, because there isn't the audience uh, that there once was. Right. And uh, until there's a sort of like a new group of people that mm -hmm. comes up, yeah. it, it's difficult to uh, to justify. Mm -hmm. I mean, Argosy Bookshop stopped issuing catalogs. And they're a very old firm, and I asked her why. And she said, well, um, we're on the internet, and people come in the store, and it's the same thing to them. Right, right. But being in Fort Lauderdale, it's not the same exactly. as being Exactly. I have know, to be in someone's Street. living room in some way. Yeah. yeah, and I don't want it to just be when they're online. I'd like people to be offline and in the relationships and in the homes and in their parks and maybe give them something that's kind of engaging to hold in their hand. As somebody once said uh, a long time ago, someone said, don't just email the special collections librarians. Give them something in their hand because they need something to read on the commute. Yeah. You know, give them something to, I want somebody to be able to highlight something and make notes. I want marginalia. <laughs> you, want, you want marginalia. Yeah. 
Who said we did that? The Imaginary by Poe? Is that a thing? I don't remember anymore. Well, the, the, the professor at University of Virginia has got a real big, he's got a site just, uh, you know, just about that, rediscovering the 19th century forgotten books that libraries were just kind of like eradicating and kind of now seeing them as, you know, artifactual.